now. All right, <laughs> right on time. So it's seven o'clock. If you haven't been on one of these before, it's an Ask Me Anything. And Monique is the star today. Um, I am just the moderator. So I'll be answering or looking for questions, looking back and forth to, um, to get them to her. And she's really going to share her experiences with her, with you. And you can literally ask anything you want. Nothing's off the table. Um, unless she says, Oh, that's really personal. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think, I don't think those kind of questions are going to come up. But feel free, ask them in the chat and we'll be sure to get you, um, your questions answered. Um, so Monique, if you don't mind, just tell us a little bit about yourself and, and how, and your journey to becoming a dental hygienist. Yeah, so my name is Monique Russell. I'm actually a recent grad. I graduated last year um, in the middle of the pandemic. So that was also an interesting dynamic. Um, I've been with Aspen for a couple months now. I started in August, really been enjoying just diving right in, getting involved um, with the different offices, being able to flow and learn from other hygienists and things like that. Um, and now I'm actually at an office all the time at here. So that's also another interesting dynamic from going to floating to being at a home, quote unquote. And for people who may not have heard the term before, because I, I think it's kind of an Aspen term. I'm not sure. Maybe it's not. But what, what is floating? What was that position that you first took? And um, I know the next question is always, was it full time? <laughs> <laughs> So when I was floating, yes, it was full-time. So I was able to get full-time hours, which was great. And floating, what was going to the different offices, uh, usually helping out when uh, other hygienists needed a, a breast day, a break, vacation, things like that. And so it was a cool opportunity, one, because I got to meet the other doctors within the Aspen network. And then I also um, was able to learn from other hygienists, especially on days when it was double hygiene. I took the opportunity to ask a lot of questions um, about their experiences, some best practices, tips and tricks, being that I was a new grad. I love that. I, you know, I didn't even think about the the um having that second hygienist there that day. I always like to clarify too because in the outside world double hygiene sometimes means that you're in two chairs mm -hmm. at Aspen it means there's two dental hygienists <laughs> yes <laughs> I was like oh, I, I might it just depends that, that word gets used yeah. but we always mean there's two hygienists so yeah. what were some like going out as a brand new grad what was the training experience like because there is some formal training and then there's also that training that you got in that position? Yeah, so what I really appreciated is that I got one-on-one -on -one training with a seasoned hygienist. So I got to shadow with her for a couple of days, um, almost a week, honestly. And then to do another week with her nearby, but also being on my own a little bit. So I was like, if I need help, here's the lifesaver, but also, do your thing. You got this. Uh, you've learned what you needed to learn in school, and now it's just applying it. So it was a really nice um, balance between the two of having someone there right by your side and then also being able to take the, the, the wheel yourself and do your thing. And I think you landed in that in-between spot where we hadn't just, she had, you, had, you got hired right when COVID was just over. Because I remember, because we interviewed, uh, together mask. <laughs> masks and I always say it's so great like she's got the best smile in the world but I didn't get to, I just got to see the great eye. um, so, <laughs> so, um we were just banking on the smile no <laughs> <laughs> but um you were now there's like a virtual training component to that but I think you were right in, did, were you a part of the virtual I can't remember I actually was the first virtual oh. I believe Yes. So you were so that all was, the kinks for everyone. <laughs> yes. So that was also interesting because I've heard, um, oh, we get to go to hop, things like that. And I was like, oh, I did hop virtually. So it was definitely a different dynamic. Uh, didn't get the whole experience, but I do believe that I received one lot of information that I needed. And it felt as if I imagine that's how hop would have been with just in a different location. <laughs> Yes, that's true. Because typically you'd go 
to Chicago, but nobody was going anywhere when you <laughs> started. Yes. Still kind of, you know, we're still being as safe as we can until um, right. time. But yes, we need to get you to Chicago somehow though. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you can see my background, this is one of the rooms in Chicago. Oh, uh, so I'm kind of there right now. You're kind of <laughs> <laughs> You've got the only version I can give you right now. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, so I wanted to, because we've done a lot of things on, on interviewing lately, and I know this is a little off topic, but you were such a fabulous interview. I wanted to see if you had any like tips or tricks that you would want to share with people on interviewing, because you were just, I feel like you have those. <laughs> oh, thank you. So I think one of my biggest tips, um, I always feel like the first question is tell me about yourself. So, and I feel like a lot of people go into like a big circle when they tell you about themselves, but just keep it simple, um, I think is one of the first tips because that's guaranteed a first question. Any interview I've ever done, tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, oh, one to two minute statement. Uh, like your elevator pitch. So that's the one thing I think just having that good introduction enough where it gets people kind of intrigued, maybe a follow up question. Um, and then secondly, I think uh, maybe going in confident, you know, so you, I know it's a, a nerve wracking experience, like you're interviewing with your future employer, uh, you want to make sure you say all the right things, but just be confident with who you are. Um, be confident about your beliefs, which you know, you learned everything that you needed to learn clinically in school. Um, so it's not that you don't know the information, it's just being confident about the information at that point. So just being yourself, be confident um, and keep it simple. I love that. I think those are really solid tips for anyone. You are a hundred percent right. Any interview is going to have that question. Any interview I've ever seen. And it sets the tone because it's the first yeah. question. So if you get kind of nervous right there, it's really hard to overcome. So yeah, really solid advice. And I just read something and it reminds, all I thought of was you and you know, I'm going to bring it up again. You're going to be like, Emily, stop it with the posture. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was talking about verbal and nonverbal <laughs> communication and interviews. And it said something like, and I can't remember the percentage, but it was over 50% is the nonverbal, which like is kind of like the confidence you were saying, but you, one specific thing that was listed first was posture and Monique has like <laughs> this amazing posture of anyone. And I, it really stood out <laughs> and it always embarrasses her. She's like, like it's just you, you're not really thinking about your posture. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, thanks, kind of a strange compliment. I was like, oh. <laughs> you're like, Emily, every time I see you, you're gonna always talk about <laughs> that's probably longevity and dental hygiene might also be <laughs> yeah I mean I I think it's a really key component for me in that part so <laughs> I'll <weird>. take it <laughs> <laughs> you'll take the weird compliment what a <laughs> so <Sounds> funny too <laughs> I, I love those um, those tips. I think they're really good and, and solidly. That's you're a hundred percent right. That's always going to be asked, and it sets it sets the tone for everything. Um, very good. So you got in right away. You first you started out floating, and then you went to we just talked about Goodyear, Arizona, as the associate hygienist in Goodyear. Can you talk a little bit about what that position is and what a next what a next move for you might look like? Yeah, so being the associate, one thing, um, what that means, I get to work alongside with another hygienist who is the lead, um, which is amazing because, again, I really appreciate being able to learn from others, being able to talk through different situations. So uh, I have that lead hygienist to kind of lean on support, like, hey, this particular thing happened. What would you do in this situation? Let's make sure we're on the same page, things like that. So it's really nice someone to lean on for that, uh, another supportive figure. Um, and also being able to set the tone for how we would like to see things run in the office. So it's nice to have that person to collaborate where we have equal respect for one another and we um, kind of work problems together as far as like scheduling, things like that. So that's a really cool aspect. Um, 
with being the associate, one thing I do feel like I get to one, build those relationships with patients. Uh, if any anyone who knows me knows that I really, really value that. Um, I want to ask those follow-up questions at the next appointment, like, how's your son doing? Things like that. And I love when a patient is like, oh, you remember that conversation? Even if I have cheat notes, I do remember. <laughs> so that's one thing that I really appreciate with being in an office, being an associate hygienist, is being able to build those relationships with our, with our patients. So, and then next step would be, um, there are a lot of one, there are a lot of opportunities within the Aspen network. I feel like next step would possibly be being a lead hygienist, maybe not in Goodyear, maybe in other, uh, another office, whatever that looks like. I feel like so many policies and I'm open to all of them. I'm just going with the flow as much as I can. But um, as far as like career goals and things like that, I feel like there's a lot of opportunities within Aspen to do that. Yes, there are. And you're you're already a story of it because you've been in one year and moved from one position to another. And um, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of opportunity for you down the road. Um, and there's clinical and there's non-clinical opportunities too. So it's um, it's really exciting when you think about what's around and what gets kind of almost invented. <laughs> it, seems, yeah. it seems like things come around that you just never would have thought existed before. Um, and then the next thing you know, we've got, like my position's one of them that didn't exist when I started, the ortho, which are hygienists, that didn't exist uh, when it yeah. started. So it's kind of cool. Um, so tell us about like a typical day for you. What does, what does your day look like when you're um, working in your, uh, your solo office? So a typical day begins with a huddle and that's an opportunity for us as an office to kind of go over um, patient schedule, like the schedule, how it looks like um, as far as the doctor, the hygienist, when we're gonna need a doctor's exam, things of that nature. Um, also, when, whenever we see new patients, things like that. So, uh, I feel like that sets the tone for the beginning of the day. Uh, I like to come in really positive. So I usually I'm like, oh, it's gonna be a good day. and kind of setting the tone for the rest of the day. Um, then it starts off with a couple of patients after that. So um, a lot of variety in our schedule. We're not always seeing the same type of patient each pa uh, throughout the day. Um, seeing anything from perio maintenance to scaling and root planing, profies. Uh, so it's a good mixture throughout the day. Um, and I appreciate that variety because could you imagine doing the same thing over and over and over again? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I could. <laughs> you know, I didn't. I didn't always uh, start out with a DSO like Aspen. So I did do. It was like the same procedure over and over every hour. Um, but yeah, I, I love that point that you like that it's different all the time. You don't want it to be like Groundhog's Day every hour. <laughs> right. So you definitely have a variety. And that's one thing that I really love is just being, maybe I do see a, a perio maintenance, but then you know the next one's going to be something either a little bit difficult, um, a little bit more involved. So I enjoy that. People always ask this. So I've got to ask, what is your schedule like though? Like, how is it set? How is it determined? Who goes where or um, how much time you have for each patient? Yeah, so that's one thing. As soon as I got here, that was one that the office manager was like, hey, what, is, what does a, a day look like for you? She brought me to the side and was like, how long do you want for your profies? How long do you want for perio maintenance, uh, skin root planing? So that's one thing that I think is amazing. We get to have autonomy over our schedule. Um, you know, we're not taking four hours to do a pre, but uh, within re reason, we are um, having autonomy over our schedule, ensure that we're having efficient schedules while also being able to, um, you know, take care of patients. Yeah, provide the care that they need. That's the yeah. big, we, the, I know I heard it a lot when I was in the field, and I'm sure you've heard it is the do right by your patient, everything else will follow. So yeah. I love that. What, uh, people will always ask this too. Are you asked to sell things? No, I've never been asked to sell anything. Um, 
what I do is provide the care that our patients need. Um, and some patients, their care looks different than others, but at the end of the day, everyone's getting the treatment that they need. Uh, they're getting the treatment that's going to help them get the healthy, stabilized uh, mouth oral hygiene that they need. So nothing, I don't feel like I'm ever selling anything. I don't think we're selling, we're providing a service. Um, and that's the best way I can explain it. We're providing care that our, our patients need. Yeah. I would say I've never experienced it where the where it's like, oh, you've got to have this many toothbrushes out the door. And it's like, mm -hmm. you're providing toothbrushes to people who need toothbrushes. And that's what, you know, we're, I'm doing yes. everything by them and from there it comes. So I absolutely think um, that's the way to go. If you think of it as selling, you're not going to last. <laughs> you're yeah. Not, like you've got to know your products and know what people need. And like you mentioned that, one thing that I do appreciate, we have those products available for our patients. So I don't know how other offices are run, but uh, I do talk to some of my friends and I'm like, oh, well, we have these products available. They're like, oh, you do? So just even have proper reasons that patients need to reach that health. Like, that's good. So. I, I have work private and I think it's probably different everywhere. But I would say if I had one product, that was like a lot. So it was like fluoride toothpaste and everybody's can have fluoride tooth, but that was all I could offer people. Mm -hmm. Whenever yeah. I would want something else, I would have to be like, well, I think you can go maybe, you know, order it on Amazon and get some expired products that are prescription products. <laughs> It wasn't really the best uh, best way to do it for the patients or ask them to get an electric toothbrush and then you see them for the next three years and they never have that brush where you know if they leave with one, they're going to use it. So right. yeah, it's it's unusual to have the, because it's it's a huge catalog that you can choose from. Um, yes. That brings up a really good point. How do you guys, like how do you determine what gets ordered or how do you order? How does ordering work at Aspen? Uh, so typically the hygienist, um, there's a cool system where all the things that we need, we may need uh, for our patient all in this one location. Uh, the lead hygienist typically goes and places the order based off of um, how we are in stock with those particular items. Uh, also, we take a look at how we're taking care of our patients. So if we're uh, knowing that we're, providing a lot of toothbrushes. We're gonna to make sure that we order those toothbrushes so that our patients coming in can receive them. Um, the chlorohexene, any of the things that we use, we just look at how often are we using them? Do we have any in stock? Let's go ahead and order it so that we can make sure that when our patients are in our office, they have access to them um, and they don't have to wait for it. They receive care that they need, the products that they need to help them maintain at home. And that's it. I love that. When I was um, in practice, I used to have to just beg the DAs. Like you had to be on their good side that day, bring some coffee, like whenever you needed something specific, you know, ordering instruments, uh, products. I, I couldn't, there was a total budget, but not a hygiene budget, but it's so uh, you guys get to do it for yourself. It was like a lot of begging and a lot of like <laughs> better be nice to her name was Maria better be nice to Maria really nice I'm nice anyway but I also knew that if I was asking for something she would say no if she was unhappy with me oh. <laughs> with people before so it's nice to have your own autonomy to budget offer. yeah your own budget yeah. as like a hygiene team another thing too is like say you in Goodyear you're in Goodyear Arizona and uh, you guys love, let's say it's MI Paste, um, but the other, another team loves, you know, um, uh, fluoride. You can have both, but you can pick and choose what you want. So it's just a, it's a huge list. It's a, kind of an unbelievable list. And that way you have that autonomy. So I think that's, um, it's just something I've not seen before. I hope that other people tell me sometime that they see it all the time, but, but it's something I haven't seen before. Okay, so we're one year in. Um, what is the number one thing you would tell? Because we do have some new graduates on. What would you tell a new graduate about the year one of dental hygiene? Year one. Oh, one, take a deep breath. 
I think <laughs> day one is always like a lot, a lot to process. You're just coming out of school. You don't have anyone to check your work after you. You're like, what is this that I've been left, I've been let into, but just take a deep breath. Like you're doing it. Um, I think my first day was just a lot to take in because it was something new. So just taking a deep breath and then doing your thing, honestly. Uh, I think a, a lot of times we allow ourselves to get overwhelmed um, instead of taking a saying, okay, here's the, the process. We know the process, take it step by step. Uh, you got this almost in a sense. Yes. Um, but yeah. And you started in a global pandemic too. So <laughs> at the beginning when we didn't know, I mean, we knew a lot as far as PPE and stuff, but we didn't know where things were, were going as like a society. So yeah. it probably was some extra stress too. What, as far as um, COVID goes, what, um, you know, what are your safety measures? What is, what is available for, for you at Aspen? So I was actually thinking about this today. Um, the PPE at Aspen is the exact same PPE that we were wearing in school. Uh, we have the gowns available, we have the N95 mask, the booties, the uh, hair caps, everything. So I was actually thinking about it and I was like, oh, we used to, we've been wearing gowns since the beginning of school. So it's literally nothing new. It's the same thing that we've been doing. So that's something that's really uh, kind of cool if you think about it. The same protocols that we took in school are the same protocols that are available through Aspen and that are being followed at Aspen. So that was a um, that was a big heart for me because that's exactly what it's supposed to be. Because school's teaching you like how you do things. So yeah, love hearing that because I'm sure when you talk to people, I'm I don't want to say uh, put this in your mouth, but is that the same experience you're hearing from your friends? No, <laughs> <laughs> I know no. the biggest compliment you can give me is to tell me it's just like school. <laughs> Emotional part because I know that's stressful. <laughs> the <laughs> PPE part. That's, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I know this one's similar to talk to me about like the new patient um, experience and the new patient, um, peri like how we perio chart it and what that looks like. So uh, new patients come in. Cool thing about um, new patients, it's effort. So they're brought in by the dental assistant. They receive their full mounts of x-rays. Um, the dental assistant goes through the restoration, sure that all of that's put into the system, medical histories, and uh, pretty much protocol that you learn from school, same thing being followed. Uh, from there, it's uh, a handoff to the hygienist. So the hygienist goes in uh, with the dental assistant, uh, usually an introduction is done, and then uh, we do our, our perio assessments at that point. Uh, we will have the help of the dental assistants to do the perio assessment, which is really cool because, yeah, that <laughs> even in school, we did it ourselves. So it's nice to have that extra hand in there at times. Um, so at that point, we go over with the new patient um, based after the assessment, what, it, what do those assessments mean to the patient and what care are we going to provide to the patient to address their needs? Um, then from there, we hand it off to the doctor. Um, so like I mentioned, it's a team effort. The doctor comes in, uh, goes over any treatment that's necessary on, on their end. And then from there, we hand off to the office manager and the office manager goes over pricing, scheduling, things like that with um, the new patient. I love that. Yeah, there's multiple layers of breaking down that barrier for the patient. Um, beautifully, beautifully said. Um, a question that comes up all the time, what is the relationship? Because in some practices, you know, the doctor may not agree with perio or the doctor may be either like more or less aggressive than the hygienist. What's it like in your practice? In practice, um, I feel like the doctor gives us a lot of autonomy over diagnosing. I also feel like if there was any uh, questions, 
either even from my end or the doctor's end we ask each other like I had a time where I was like oh, I'm not really sure this is pretty borderline um so I'm going to consult with the doctor and I talked with the doctor and I was like you know I think it could be this but you know there's not enough evidence for me to support that what are your thoughts do you see bone loss here Things like that and the doctor has always been really supportive in um, answering those questions for me coming to a conclusion with me so I haven't had any issues um, I had any like oh we just never agree it's always been a collaborative um, conclusion a collaborative effort to come to the conclusion I think that's the cool thing about being at a at a at a DSO is that you you get that autonomy and you can look at it's not one person's decision. It's like looking at the guidelines, like you were talking about, what does AAP say? Are we seeing this? And so it's a lot less um, emotion and a lot more mm-hmm. critical than I've seen in other, other, and I love private practice. I don't mean to like, it can be a fantastic experience. I really enjoyed mine. If that's your thing, I don't ever want to uh, discourage somebody from doing what they want to do. But I did notice like it's less of an emotional like fight against each other and more of a clinical. And I don't know what that is. I don't know um, why that happens, but I think it could be some of those like AAP guideline classes that that we offer and things like that. I, I'm not sure, but it works. I've seen it working really well. And, and as a hygienist, it's like a breath of fresh air to be seen as a clinician, you know, instead of seen as a like tooth cleaning person. <laughs> Yes, I agree. Oh, so um, what so far has been, because I I don't think we've implemented the technology yet. I know it's coming down the road, but um, that I think will be everyone's favorite. But what is your favorite technology that you use in your practice? Because we are technology heavy. <laughs> yes. So my favorite has been laser. We've recently started implementing that into our offices. And I'm not going to lie, I was really nervous about it because I've done a CU course on laser in the in the past, and it was a long class, but the clinical part was very short, and I was like, I don't feel comfortable using laser at all, 100%. I was like, I hope I never have to do this. And then we did a laser uh, CE course um, with Aspen um, one Friday evening, and afterwards, I felt so much better. Uh, like going through the material again, getting that hands-on experience. Uh, Technology is beautiful. It's easy to use. uh, Very nice. So I've been using it a lot lately and I went from one extreme to another. I was like, I hope I never have to use that to like, oh, do I have any laser today? So uh, (laughs) that has been my favorite so far. Um, And just it's just so user friendly and the ads behind it to help our reach healthy uh, gums, healthy oral cavity. Like, how can you be mad at that? So I really love uh, the laser so far. That is awesome. That is awesome. Because I know Arizona and New Mexico are like kind of the test smart, kind of a little side note, really great thing about Aspen. There's 830 practices. So we'll test things out to see how they work. You know, what our hygienists have to say about it before it gets implemented or rolled out um, nationwide. So that's some really good feedback. I love to hear how much you're loving it. Um, That was the one thing I always felt like we needed was that the laser. So I love hearing that you've got it and that you love it. Um, yeah. do, do you use it for SRP? Do you use it for, well, you can use it for everything, but what do you like using it for? Everything? So we use it for uh, scaling root planing, gingivitis therapy, and perio maintenance. So, so far I've used it for all those things. Uh, the one that I've seen uh, like quicker results is gingivitis therapy because within Aspen, I'm not sure how other places do it, but we do the gingivitis therapy in two treatments. So the first one is where we do, I always say this is the heavy duty. I remove the bacteria that's hanging out underneath the gums. Uh, At that second appointment, I remeasure the gums to ensure that those numbers have uh, improved, make sure that we we don't have bleeding anymore and things like that. So um, that's where I've seen results 
mainly that gingivitis therapy treatment because you come back in about seven to 10 days. So, oh, that's exciting when they come back yeah. and everything is looking even better and you're like, yeah, I did that. <laughs> yes. So I really enjoyed it so far. And, you know, I was a little nervous about it at first, but I really enjoy it now. So. Now you're like, can we get a second laser? I think. <laughs> <laughs> Milda's using Milda's the identity she works. Milda's using the laser too much. I need the laser. <laughs> she probably I feels that, that way about me. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. You know, um, I, there are so many places where you see like really cool technology just sitting in the corner. Um, I, I always share that story. I, I worked in a private practice. Absolutely loved my doctor, and he loved technology, but didn't really know how to implement it. So every time we would go to you know a dental convention he would come back with something new and it, I swear it collected dust in the office. And then once it collected dust in the office for three to five years, or maybe depending on what it was, if it was really big, maybe a year, then it went to the basement where it could collect more dust. <laughs> so it's really neat that we have our technologies and we use them. Yeah. Um, another neat one, and I want to hear kind of your patient experience with it, but what do you think about scanning? How does that work? And where do you guys put it in in your practice? So with the iTero scanning, what I think is a really cool uh, is patients get to see the 3D image of the mouth instantly. Uh, a lot of we look at the x rays as a perio assessment to determine um, what's going on in their mouth. But when you show a patient an x-ray and you're like, this is going on, you see this right here, they don't. They, they say, yeah, I see that, but at the end of the day, they don't. So with the iTero machine, it gives them uh, one, one's like, oh, this is so cool, but they get to actually see the model of their mouth on the screen. They're like, oh, that is my back there with that, that filling, or, oh, I do have a hole in the that too. So it really just kind of brings to life what's going on in their mouth and it allows to see it, so. That's a really cool piece of technology, um, especially for patient education. I, I could not agree more. I think back to, um, this is kind of a funny story, but it just reminded me when you're like, they don't see it. <laughs> I remember going to a chiropractor way back in the day and they did, they did x-rays and I had, um, this is probably TMI, but I was wearing an uh, underwire. And so I was looking and I was like, and what is, you know, <laughs> pretending that I knew like what I was seeing and, and this, what is this? And like, that is, that is an underwire. And I'm like, yes, yes, I got it. I, you know, then that's where our patients are. You know, they don't know what they're seeing. Right. So, um, it's really nice to, and we shouldn't expect them to know, right. They, they didn't go to hygiene school. I will say first couple of months in hygiene school, I mean, maybe longer than it should have been. They, they're like, don't you see the calculus on this radio? <laughs> being like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> finally there was like a day where it clicked and I did but I do remember being like but I didn't see and if I was if we're having that much trouble in school how right. would you just walked in and this is their first 45 minutes of of a, a dental experience um how are they going to see it they're not so exactly just reminded me of that I was like oh yes <laughs> And what is the patient's reaction though? I know for us now, it seems like old hat. I mean, since you've been here, I mean, you, you literally trained on this. So like when you started, we already had iTeros. So um, it's old hat to you, but do you still get patient reactions? 100%. They're like, oh, I, I remember I showed one patient um, their scan. Uh, they weren't a new patient, but they hadn't been in in a while. And I was just like, oh, you see where this area where your teeth are rotated and there's like a lot of, um, like there's a lot of crowding in this area, things like to hang out in this space. And they were looking and they're like, so how do I uh, prevent that? Like they're asking questions and it's really, like I said, it's a great patient uh, education tool. They get excited about it when they see their teeth pop up. They're like peeking out the corner. They're like, oh, that's my tooth. Like, so patients excited about it. So I really just like to, I love, I know it's for other things too, but patient education with it, I think it's a great tool. Yeah. 
I don't think there's a better tool. Like when I think about patient education, I'm like, what better could you do than, than their actual mouth? Like, I don't, I can't really think of anything that would Mm -hmm. cost any, any better. So I love that you're loving that. And then do you guys have the 3d scanners now too, for, um, implants? Yes, we do. We got that a couple months ago, I want to say. Like the piano machine so does the 3D. Yes, yes. 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 So, so I'm not going to lie. I'm not that familiar with it. Uh, we did do a training. I do have to go back and uh, watch a couple of the videos. <laughs> it's more for when a patient's getting um, like an implant or some or placement like that. But it is really cool. Um, like if you're not sure about a wisdom tooth, you can get the picture's crazy. Like what it does is crazy, but I'm with you that, that that's not my forte. Luckily we have amazing VAs who, who run that for us, but it's still really neat to see and really neat to see that we're investing in that, that kind of technology. Um, you know, I don't even think about the small technologies anymore. Like every op has a television, those kind of, I don't even, those just kind of those are, you just kind of expect that digital everything, um, yeah. to, but some places that's still not there. So, uh, so do you know about the new technology that they're working on? The voice activated probing? You that are one? right. <laughs> yes. I, I am so ready for that. I'm so excited right now. It's working through accents, um, throughout. I had, um, some team from, uh, Louisiana. Yes. No, I'm sorry. Last Friday. And they said, bring it over here because no, no, <laughs> understand us. <laughs> so they want it down there to make sure I can understand them. I think that's fair. <laughs> that is fair. That is more than fair. Yeah. Uh, um, so it's fun technology things for sure. Um, aside from technology, we, we really pride ourselves on like culture um, and um, like being a family. Can you talk to us about um, what the culture has been like for you um, both in both roles? Like, cause you were floating everywhere and that can be challenging to, cause you're getting to know people, but just in short snippets. So both there and at your, your forever home. <laughs> so I think with floating is a really cool opportunity because uh, like you said, it's in snippets to me people you get to learn um, from them. Also what I experienced is all the hygienists that I came across, um, they would be like, hey, if you need anything, here's my number, call me. Um, I What I would do when I floated is I would go to the office a, a day or just so I knew where things were. Um, I knew their, like how they operated in their office. So a lot of times I got to meet the hygienist that I was covering for and everyone has always been like, here's my number. If you need anything, let me know. Um, uh, it was, it's just been like that. I didn't feel like awkward at any point. Like, oh, what should I do? At literally every office that I went to, there was someone who was helpful, someone who was able to provide me with information that I didn't know beforehand. So that's one thing that I really appreciate is everyone was really welcoming. Oh, well, that's so great to hear. That's the, they always say culture is the things that happen when nobody's watching. And I think most people had no idea that they were all reaching out and saying like, hey, get a hold of me when you need anything. So I love to hear that. Um, I pretty much have all the hygienists in the West Valley's phone number. (laughs) Like they've all given it to me. That's especially exciting because, you know, during non-COVID times, we get the hygienists together um, about once a quarter and do a meal or something just so everybody can kind of, you know, opt in and and have some fun together. And Mm -hmm. with COVID, we haven't been able to do that. So you wonder, are those relationships still happening because we haven't been able to, to, it's because it's a terrible idea to get everybody who does the same thing together in one room. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) really good way not to have a hygiene department for a couple of weeks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so it's good to hear that, that people are, um, are still bonding in that way. What are some other, I, I know we haven't been as active as, as we were um, pre-COVID and I know that was even pre-you, um, 
what were pre you at Aspen? I mean, you were around for COVID. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are yeah. some things? I, I know you had the laser training, but what are some other ways that um, we're kind of working around that to be a team? Uh, so we hygiene calls monthly. So that's one way to stay connected, um, to also be able to learn best practices, uh, to learn about the new technology, things like that. So, and also to have a support team um, around. So the hygiene call is a really uh, great way to maintain that interaction amongst each other. Uh, there are also some I don't know if you want me to go into this, but there's some CE courses available yeah. as well. Um, I know laser was one that we were able to do socially distanced um, uh, at the at a facility, but there are some online opportunities to um, further your CEs and things like that. So uh, that's one way to, I know it's not as interactive as actually being with one another, but those are some of the ways. Yeah, we do. It is, it is a challenge. We have to think of those things a lot more than before. Before it's just like, uh, name a place, get everybody together. Okay, we're good. Now, yeah. oh, can we do this? Can we do that? <laughs> I have to think of things, but I like those innovative ways. You mentioned the call. So uh, that reminds me of, of Miss Becky, uh, who's your territory manager of hygiene support. Um, can you talk a little bit about like what that role does or, or, or what, it, what it provides for uh, hygienists in the field? Yeah, so I'm sure Becky does a lot behind the scenes. Uh, <laughs> so I can only speak on just a small amount, but as far as uh, for the hygienist in the Valley, she's really almost like a support for us to lean on when we're having challenges, when there's something that we need that extra guidance with, we can connect with her. Um, she's a phone call, text message away, uh, and she's support. I guess the names in the title are the, the functions in the title. She's hygiene support for us. Also, another thing, um, she does lead the hygiene calls. So uh, as far as talking about best, best practices and things like that, I feel like that's also something that she's done. Like at our last hygiene call, we talked about some of the challenges and uh, some of the uh, things around laser, since it is something that's newer for us. Uh, she was there to help us through that or tell us some of the information that we need to know as far as laser was concerned. I love that. I think um, when you need support, it's nice to know that there's someone that's a phone call away. So not that this happens a lot, but man, if there, let's say there was an issue where the dentist and you and Perio, it wasn't working, Sometimes it can be that third party that kind of just helps mediate the, the situation and go over like the facts uh, yeah. to help help you get what you need. And um, I think it's also just that call that you can make if, um, you know, if, it, if hours are too little, hours are too much, any, anything that's making you not feel like this is the best thing ever, that's what, that's your person that you can get in yeah. contact and she will tell you sometimes like, oh, there's not a lot I can do about this one, but <laughs> yes, it's really our, you said it, the job is to support. So mm -hmm. it's just nice knowing that there's checks and balances. I know, and I keep saying in private practice and I do love my private practice. So please, please, please don't think I'm dogging him, but there, that, there's no, there was, it was always whatever the doctor said, that was like the end that was, the, they were the owner, they were the, um, manager they were everything and which was very stressful for them I'm sure yeah um so you know there wasn't really someone to bounce ideas off of even if they tell me I'm wrong I'm okay but I just want that support so I can bounce some ideas and um yeah. can't be built with your hygiene network which it sounds like you've got an awesome one it's nice to have like another person to go to so um very very neat um now, I always say this, hygiene is a profession of choice. You can choose to go many places. So what made you choose Aspen Dental? So I, I feel like I've touched this before with you, but definitely I'm very big on providing access to care. Um, my background is in public health. Uh, I've just had a passion for providing access for care, making sure that the things that I do align with that. So 
when I was ready to come into the hygiene world and looking for opportunities that best align with my values. Um, Aspen also has a, a thing for providing access to care. So I felt like that was something that drew me to Aspen. Um, just that's top of the list for me, being able to provide access for those who aren't typically able to get it. That is awesome. And, and she, I, I'm going to brag on you just a little bit in case somebody didn't already read it. She has not only a, she is a, she has a master's in public health. So she's not just in public health. She's <laughs> smarty pants in public health. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so you felt like it really aligned with your values. Um, what, ex what type of patients do you see on a daily basis? Cause you said, yeah, people that don't have access to care, but what does that look like? Oftentimes it's the patient who's like, oh, I've been putting this off because I'm taking care of this person, that person, I have a family, I, my mom, I, I just, they take on a lot of additional things. They work longer hours. They don't have days off during the week. Um, that's typically the patient that I come across is, oh, I'm putting this off. This is something that I really need to get done. Um, time in until every day I come across that type of patient. So I think that pretty much falls into line with those who don't always have time to go to an office that only open from seven to three or, or something along those lines. Very true. I, I think, what would you say is the well, average patient, like um, time it's been since a patient's been able to come in? So the time that For like a new patient, how, how long has it been since your average new patient? Oh. Mm, on average, probably about five years, sometimes more. Um, but I have like five range, five year range often. Yeah. And I, it's so gratifying, like you're saying, because it's, it's been a while and because we specialize in that, I feel like there's like an extra level. I mean, I'm sure everybody's empathetic, but there's a le extra level of empathetic experience that you should, mm -hmm. you do do that every day. So it's not like the first person you've seen um, even that day that's been over five years, but yeah, I, I've met people in their sixth season and this is their first, um, this is their yeah. first appointment. Cause they, Same. yeah, I've come across, they're like, well, you know, my parents didn't really uh, take us to the dentist. So that wasn't our priority. So this is my first time coming in and they're 50, 60 year old. So yeah, you see that on a day to day too. You do. I smiled because I thought all anybody in hygiene school has got to be thinking board paint. Well, maybe <laughs> five years is a great board patient. <laughs> yes. No, ask a dental hygienist as far as that goes. <laughs> now, when you were in school, I, and this you may not have had this experience, but did your teacher say you'll never see it, you know as difficult patients as you do in school? And it yeah, they. <laughs> Um, no, I feel like, no. I, well, I think it's a good balance. Like I've seen type of patients that I've seen in school. Um, we've used to see period maintenance patients in school too. So there were like ladies that reminded me of my, like a grandma. Uh, and I see those patients too. And you see the patients who haven't been in a long time and they're like, oh, I really want, I'm in pain. I really want to get this taken care of. And at school, that's how it was. And at Aspen, that's how it was. So I know I said this already, like my experience at school is very similar to how my experience at Aspen is. Sorry, my dog. No, we <laughs> welcome these puppies. <laughs> he, he thinks he's like a guard dog. He's 20 pounds and he hugs you when you he gets the door. So I'm sorry. <laughs> like he thinks Don't he's be a guard sorry. Dog, but <laughs> he's really not. He just goes to greet you and give you a hug. <laughs> That's sweet. Now, the big question is, are you brushing his teeth? Yeah, you know, I was just telling him that he needs to make sure that he flosses every night because for him to have periodontal disease and be our baby, like that's not going to fly. So <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I think, and I've, I've had it, I've had Aspen Dental Hygienist describe this to me before. And if you don't feel that way, don't feel like you have to, but do you feel like you have like an enhanced perio skill with a type of patients that you're able to see? 
I do think that I am utilizing the skills that I learned in school a lot more because of the fact that we are seeing the same types of patients. We're seeing um, perio-involved patients every day, throughout the day. So I do feel like not my skills are getting better day by day and they're staying sharp. I, I totally, I, that that's kind of one of the cool parts. When someone finally said that to me, I was like, you know what, that's a really good point we do have sharper skills because back in the day, you know, if you're working for a place that only takes, um, and I, I don't want to get too insurance heavy because I know people are like, what, but only takes like a PPO insurance, which is a, like a high level insurance. If, if it only takes that insurance, then you're getting people who have a lot of access to care. And when they have a lot of access to care, not always, but generally they've had that for life. So you're seeing mm -hmm like profi after profi after profi after pro. I mean, the most exciting part of your day or for me at least was like, what color toothbrush do they get? <laughs> <laughs> because nothing else was different from a point. Right. So I, I like I like that there's challenges and to your point, it's helping people who truly need our help and really um, maybe being one of the first people to get them on a regular regimen so that they can stay healthier for life. Uh, you don't get those opportunities uh, everywhere. I I can't think of another place, and I'm there may be, but I can't think of another place where you where you really see that. Um, I'm trying to think what we, we so you chose Aspen because of access to care. Is there anything else that's a big value match for you? Uh, I was uh, speaking with some about this uh, earlier today. Uh, the the idea of diagnosing the patient correctly. So when we're in school, we learn um, this is how you would diagnose a patient. We learn everything by the book. Uh, at Aspen, we follow those same things that we learn because that's what you're supposed to be doing. So when, um, just being able to stay true to those guidelines that we learn, that practice, um, in school, we're still staying true to those guidelines in practice, so. That's so critical because especially as a new graduate, um, I didn't have that same experience and I just remember being so confused. Like, I'm like, okay, so it's not the, now the guidelines were even different because I'm old, but it's not these <laughs> guidelines that we're following. I mean, that was clear, right? We're not going with this, but then what are we going with? So then everything, every time you see someone new as a new graduate, it's confusing because right. there, there's no, when we're, when we're not diagnosing, it's like, well, what are we doing? And then you have questions about, I had, you know, questions about my license, like, Am I letting things go that I shouldn't let go? And, and it felt super confusing to transition mm -hmm. something that was very, um, you know, textbook, a, a textbook, you could understand it to something that was like uh, floaty. That's all I could explain it. It was just like, ah, this one's a perio, this one's a, a profi, this one's an SRP, this one that looks very similar. That's not an SRP. So yeah super confusing confusing so I like that and I love that you're saying like you're supported in that like giving what is really there yep do you oh, it's nice to be supported it is. it is do you ever feel like there's any um any pressure to do it any other way pressure only for my like another way no I feel You're pressure like, no. for myself to do it the right way <laughs> like, like let me double check and make sure I did that correctly but not like to do it any other way no you're like no <laughs> more aggressive or less aggressive yeah. but you know I think one of the parts especially for someone who um maybe newer or maybe hasn't used the skill I think one of the most challenging parts is developing that communication to the patient of, of delivering news that may not be um, rosy. You know, you have a disease and this is what it is. How did you develop that? Um, how did you how did you navigate that? Because I I've seen that to be the most difficult part for people. So kind of goes back to how I answered the interview, uh, keeping it simple. Uh, being confident in your delivery, and then also being true, like 
you know exactly what's going on in their mouth based off of your perio assessments. Communicate that to that patient in a clear, simple way. Um, I do know, feel like it was, you know, a challenge to get your groove at first um, because you want sure that you're explaining it in a way that is not giving out information because then I know you can excited about it and then you keep going on and on and on and the patient's like I lost you at your first sentence so just making sure that you're concise confident um and oh nothing leaving for questions so those three things being concise confident and leaving room for our questions I think is the way to do it and then at the same time you're gonna find your group like there are things that I say um that kind of put my own spin on it, um, just allowing my personality to show um, that others don't. And it's okay as long as we're still getting information out. I love that. Yeah, we don't want you to be a robot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> An Aspen bot, no. Yeah, so. I think that's so important. And I think the fact that you just got so much, because we do see new patients, you have that experience to give them that enough that you can, you know, get that practice where, I, I mean, when I worked, I would see maybe four new patients a month. So every time was like, Ugh! <laughs> you know what I mean? Cause it was so unusual where yeah. for us, that's, that's not unusual, but there's plenty of people who um, need care and have a lack of access to care that come to see us. Um, so we, you, we get that rapid experience. And I think our, I always, when I would go in, cause I, I used to do what Becky does that territory manager job. When I would go in and listen to our hygienist, I would be like, we legitimately have the best communicators in the field. Like other hygienists, they don't have this communication ability that, that all of our hygienists have. And the only thing I could think is it's got to be that they just get the practice. I don't, you know, well, and, and I think there's support and other things helping too, but I really do think um, it's the practice and maybe everyone has the same passion like you're describing. Yeah, I think it's a little bit of both. I love that. Oh, so we're, we're rounding up right here on our hour. So I'm going to do the same thing I did last time because you've, you've, you've been a star more than once. <laughs> <laughs> What, um, if you had one word to describe your experience in your, in your one year so far with Aspen Dental, what would that word be? So, instead of using the same word, I'll try to spice it up a little bit. Um, it's similar, but I would say unit at this point. Um, my word last time was family, but I'm going to take it a step further and just say that our approach to how we've been taking care of our patients, how we collaborate with one, with one another has been a unified effort. So unity is gonna be my word. Um, also just how we interact as a team, um, collaborating with one another, getting ideas from each other, it's unified all around. So. I love that. I still like family too. <laughs> yeah, I, I love like family. We talked about, <laughs> <laughs> I was, it up a little bit so they're like that's family every time like same concept different word mine is really inspired by kind of what you were saying it just got me thinking just integrity I feel like it's a a place where if you have a high level when I believe all hygienists do but with a high level of integrity you can you can do what you've wanted to do and you can and I see that across the board at all levels so I think I think I was inspired by you and things you were saying. Um, I don't know um, if I've ever mentally articulated it before, but I think integrity is the word I love that it. out to me. <laughs> Thanks for your inspiration. <laughs> um, well, it has been a sincere pleasure. I, I cannot wait till this COVID's over and I can go see you in person in your office. Um, yes. But thank you so much for being on and thanks for everything that you do for patients every day. We are so blessed to have you. Thank you so much. And thank you for the opportunity once again of doing these. <laughs> night. Good night. <laughs>